Before the trade deadline this season, the Dallas Mavericks came out of nowhere and pulled a blockbuster trade to acquire superstar Kyrie Irving from the Brooklyn Nets. In order to get Kyrie, the Mavericks sent Dallas Spencer Dinwiddie, Dorian Finney-Smith, one first round pick and two second round picks. Now it's not as big as some of the other trades, but that's a hefty price to pay. Ever since this trade, the Mavericks had a 3-4 record, and two days ago when playing against the Lakers, despite winning by 27 at one point, they lost by 3 in the end. So right off the bat, there is no guarantee that this career trade will work out for Dallas. However, we just got some reports today that might sabotage Dallas championship hope. According to Eric Pincus of Bleacher Report quote, Irvin will be an unrestricted free agent this offseason, and multiple league sources indicate he is expecting a max salary in July. Based on the NBA's current salary cap projection of $134 million for next season, Dallas can pay Irvin up to $272 million over 5 years. Now here's the thing, we know that Kyrie can be unpredictable sometimes and look at this from another league executive, quote, Kyrie will be on his best behavior until he gets paid. After is a different story, unless he and Luka actively despise each other. I don't see Dallas letting him go. In today's video, we'll go over everything from a contract perspective to a roster perspective to see if it makes sense for Dallas to give this huge extension for Kyrie Irving. So with that being said, let's roll the intro. Yo, what's up guys, Jason's here, back with another video. If it's your first time watching, I make content for every single team in the NBA. If you want the latest basketball news and rumors on your feed, all you're gonna do is to leave a like and subscribe so that you won't miss any of my future upload. Now, let's first take a look at this trade details here. As mentioned before, Dallas sent out Spencer Dinwiddie, Dorian Finney-Smith, one first and two second round picks to get Kyrie Irving and Markif Morris. Right off the bat, this already answers our question. If we look at Kyrie's contract, this is the last year of the deal. Despite this, the Mavericks still pulled the trade. What that means here is, the Mavericks are kinda stuck. If they don't pay Kyrie, that means they're basically sending all these capitals for a half year rental. If they do, they're gonna have to bear the massive cost, especially under the conditions that Kyrie sometimes can be unpredictable off the court. Now, let's take a look at Luka's contract here. He is in the first year of his deal and has a cap hit of 37.1 million, but if I look at the next few years, it goes from 40 million all the way up to 48 million. Now, if they extend Kyrie Irving on this five year, $272 million extension, that's another cap hit of $50.4 million on average per year. And if we add that to Luca's contract, that's almost $95 million a year. Moving on to the contract for the entire team, let's see here. Next season, Team Hardaway has a cap hit of over $20 million, Bertans with $16, Reggie Bullock here with $10+, plus, Max Kleber here with about $10, and a few medium-sized contracts here and there. However, two huge front row contributors in Christian Wood and Dwight Powell will be for agent, and I think Dallas won them back. So you can already see here, the Mavericks are going to have to pay some heavy luxury tax to go for a run next season. Even when we look at Dallas draft capitals, you can see here, they only have five first round picks and one second rounder from now until 2029. Even if they want to make a trade here and there, it wouldn't be that easy. In essence, the Mavericks have to pay Kyrie because of the hefty price they paid in the trade, but they have so many financial liabilities on their hand that they have to take care of this offseason. Now, don't get me wrong here, Kyrie Irving is a great player. With the Nets earlier, he was averaging 27.1 points, 5.1 rebounds, 5.3 assists, and 1 steal per game, while shooting 37.4% from the arc. With Dallas so far, he's averaging 26.2 points, 5.2 rebounds, 6.5 assists, and 1 steal per game, while shooting almost 41% behind the arc. Personally, I have no problem with Kyrie as a player on the court, but again, sometimes off the court, his behavior can be questionable. Alright, let's now move forward to more of a team structure and chemistry perspective. With this trade, the Dallas Mavericks have a backcourt duel in Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic. What does that remind you of? James Harden and Chris Paul, and James Harden and Russell Westbrook. A backcourt duel of two guards who are both ball dominant. 
Now, if we take a look back then of the Rockets team, they are very top heavy at their guards position. They got weak defense and basically no presence in the paint. One more example, the Golden State Warriors, they also invested heavily at their guard positions and look what it is now, their front court is really thin. Overall, looking at this Dallas Mavericks team right now, we have to agree that they are a much better offensive team with Kyrie Irving. However, their defense is still one of the worst in the league. As of right now, Dallas are ranked as 23rd under defensive efficiency and the team heavily lacks shot blocker and defensive players. Now, even though the league is getting faster and faster, I'm seeing a trend here where the luxurious backward combo is becoming less and less popular. If we look at some of the best teams in the league right now, you can see that the Nuggets have a big small combo of Jokic and Murray, the Bucks have a big small combo of Giannis and Holiday, and the Sixers have a big small combo of Embiid and Harden. Those teams have a backcourt guard duo, for example, like Steph and Clay for the Warriors, and Trent DeJounte for the Hawks, they are not doing as well this season. Especially if the Mavericks extend Kyrie for this massive 5 year deal, they are stuck with this backcourt duo for a few years and basically there is very small room for error. And if we consider the fact that both Luka and Kyrie are ball dominant, they have to figure out a scheme that works for both of them. Of course, if the team can win a championship, it's all worth it. But the problem is, I don't think the Mavericks have enough to match up with other Western Conference championship teams such as the Nuggets and the Kings. I don't think it makes sense to invest in a team when you are always making the playoffs but can't make it deep. In my opinion, you either go all in for a championship or you rebuild for that because staying in the middle is only a waste of time and capital. The unfortunate thing here is the Mavericks are stuck at this point where they have to pay Kyrie. If Kyrie is firm on that 5 year deal, then Dallas have to pay the hefty price. Alright guys, that's all we got for today's video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section if you think it makes sense for Dallas to give Kyrie this huge 5 year extension. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and follow me on social media with all the links in the description box down below. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next episode. Peace.